talk about properly recording these types of donations. Thank you. It, it, this is to me one of the biggest opportunities we have to clarify because I see how these are reported very greatly amongst organizations and sometimes within the same organization. And so it gets very challenging on how do we um, run reports? How do we make sure we're not over and stating? How do we consistently understand what's happening in our database? And by actually using proper and best, what I do believe our best business practices and seeing these, you can actually address all of those variable needs pretty easily. But the fact that we're not consistently applying the same data structure makes it hard to answer these. So let's take, uh, for example, what we're just going to keep talking about a donor advice fund. We all understand those. They come in, you know, Don and Jane Smith, donor advice fund, written on the local community foundation's checking account. And we've been soliciting these donations from this donor. But how do we, you know, what do we do when we get this check in hand? Where does it go? And immediately, all too often, we have this desire or thought that we need to put it on the individual donor's record because we want to make sure that we understand they gave a gift. Well, if you properly record it, you can manage that during, through other features of your donor database. And so the reason why this is important, and it's not only from a gift entry standpoint, we're going to talk about that you know, as we keep moving forward, but when you shift over into a donor profile, donor prospect management standpoint, this is one of the most incredibly important information, key pieces of information. The mere presence of a donor advised fund or a DAF for that individual immediately means they're more charitable. They're more likely to give a charitable gift because they've already gone through the process of planning their financial charitable strategies. So I love and I want to know this donor gives this much money from their personal, they give this much money from the donor advised, you know, whatever those, those strategies or those methods in which they do give their gifts. So when I get that hard copy check in, the reason, and there's a very specific reason why, we always want that check to be written hard credit on to the community foundation that wrote the check. And that, and most people do not agree with, or there's a lot of controversy around that, but it absolutely belongs on the community foundation's record. And the reason why is because the community foundation is the one that's transacting that. They're the ones that are providing it. And they're the one that if anybody calls and says, where's this gift? You're gonna go look at the community foundation's record because they're the check writer. Now for financial credits, they are the, they're the check writer. Now we're not talking about stewardship. Financial recording and stewardship are two entirely different things. You don't look at them at the exact same way. So when I'm, and I'm going, I'm, when I'm running financial reports, I look at it one way to get stewardship differently. What I want to also do with that uh, gift that's recorded to the community foundation, and some systems only allow you to do this once. And so if it's once, you have to kind of alternative. But if you can have more than one soft credit or pass through gift or however your donor database applies it, that's where you want to do so. So not only do I put the hard credit on for the community foundation, I soft credit the individual 